Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tuesday. And welcome uh, to a video that was actually asked for by at least one of you guys. There actually might have been a few of you guys that have asked for this recently. So to those people, we appreciate your recommendations. Yes. We are always, always looking for you guys to let us know what you want to see from us. Because we feel like we have done a lot of <laughs> different a lot ideas. Of and, yeah. And it'd we, be nice to switch it up a little bit. We would like to throw in some more non-haul things, of course. And we really like to do ones that you guys specifically ask for. Like, the day in the life recently, that was asked for by you guys. That was really fun. The question and answer was asked for by quite a few of you guys. I believe the bins... Thrift with me was asked for by a few people. Yeah, especially like with the updated rules and stuff. Yes, yeah, so we. Mike is also in the room. So if you see any little like tan, if the camera gets bumped all of a sudden, <laughs> that's him. So yeah, we really have liked that some of you guys have been leaving some recommendations for us, and we've been trying to do like all the ones that we've been getting. And so today's is one of those. And today's recommendation or request was to do a ten bolo shoes list. Yes. And I believe we've probably done at least one of these in the past. Mm -hmm. But, of course, there are many, many brands of shoes that you should be picking up if you see them. And we're all lifelong learners. And it's always fun to cover <laughs> some new ones. And it's actually really fun to do the research on these because mm -hmm. we learn things about these that we did not know. And some of these brands I see really frequently. And we'll get into that in a little bit. So it's fun to be like, oh... I know this backstory. But there are some fun facts, yeah, that we learned about some of these that make us maybe respect them more, maybe respect them a little less. You'll see as we get into it. We'll get it. into that all in due time, dear children. I also want to say that actually this time we have a big mix of things. Yes, we we got high end, mm -hmm. we have lower end, we have very obscure, and then we have some like very niche. It's just like all different We kinds. got all of our eggs in all kinds of different baskets. Yeah, which, with our bolos lately, we've tried to move away from only doing like luxury because of course you're not going to see that all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's fun to throw in some ones that you might actually like see. And we do have to address the odd thing in the room that we're both wearing like the same. Shirt. So this is like one of my favorite shirts. Oops. When I was doing the trend report research for like fall 2021, I think. It was a while ago. Graphic mm -hmm. tees under blazers were really popular. And the website I was looking at had this as an example of one. And it's a Ganny have a spiritual day t-shirt. And I just like loved it. it is and for being like designer, it was $85, which for t-shirts a lot, but for a designer one, not that bad. So I did purchase it. And we were out shopping yesterday <laughs> and I found this one for $20. And it says, have a nice say, please recycle. It yeah, this one says, please recycle also. I love that. That one looks like the old, like, shopping bag. It looks like, like a Walmart bags. logo. Yeah. So I guess I'm not going there later. Yes. I would have been super mad if you found this one. This one's, like, a lot harder to find. There's quite a few of the smiley face. Like, I love the smiley face one. I think it fits my personality quite well. Yeah. You can wear it under <laughs> You can tell yours is newer, too. Look at your white. is more, like, crisp. Mine's I just watched this for the first time yesterday. So. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why we're wearing these. And actually, it's not on the list, but Ganny is a bolo shoe brand. They have amazing shoes. Ganny is bolo of everything. If you so ever see Ganny shoes, do not be afraid to pay up for them. Which is a common theme for a lot of these brands. Yes. Don't be afraid to pay up for things if you are capable of doing so. <laughs> So we each have five, and we did each do our own research for these five things. That's and great. as usual, we're going to cover just kind of like a back, like history about them, some fun facts mm -hmm. about them, where they're sold, what they sell for retail, so like in the store, and mm -hmm. then what they kind of sell for resale, an average sort of, or yes. like a range. Generality. Gen Generality? Generalizations. <laughs> That's the word. Realization. There we go. Yes. I wish this had, like, a brain on it. And <laughs> then we'll talk about our past with trying these yes. so you guys know real life, how they have done for real life resellers. We both are saving our most, like, funky, interesting ones for last, so you'll have to save for those ones. The ones that you guys maybe don't know the most. So I suppose, <laughs> instead of rambling on, because we're five minutes in and we haven't even and started. We haven't we, talked about a single shoe. We should jump into <laughs> it. So I will start off with definitely one of my most expensive ones on my five, and that is Gianvito Rossi. So Gianvito Rossi, the father of Gianvito Rossi, was a shoemaker back, and he started in 19 
1951, not under his own label or anything, just working for, I don't know where, but some shoemaking he company. He was just a humble cobbler. Probably a manufacturer. And then him and his son, Gianvito Rossi, teamed up to create Gianvito Rossi brand in 2006, which actually, I don't know if he started with his dad, but obviously he was inspired by his dad and stuff to get into that business. Mm -hmm. And their focus is really elegant, minimalistic, and very feminine. They have a ton of pumps, a lot of like lacy sandals, very, very just like classy. So when They're I- They're really pretty shoes to look at, When honestly. I think of Gianvito Rossi, I think Manolo Blahnik and I think Jimmy Choo. It's right in that mm -hmm. same range, except I think Gianvito keeps their value a lot better, actually. They're supposed to last like a lifetime, which explains the heavy price tag because you're not paying for like, you wear it to a party, you throw it away. No. Like, these are expensive shoes, but they're supposed to be like passed down. And that's why they I remind me of like Manolo's <laughs> because they're quality. And they also now offer like a refurbishing program to make them even more sustainable. So that's fantastic mm -hmm. too. And they're sold at Birdoff Goodman and Nordstrom and Saks Fifth, Forward and tons of extremely high-end websites. They retail for about 700 to 2,500 on average. I think I get sick if I spend $2,500 on her shoes. <laughs> but of course, probably with like all of these, there are outliers. So there are ones that go up higher. Like there was a Swarovski crystal embellished knee high, shin high boot that was like $4,000. So. Why wouldn't it? Yeah. And then the resale forum on Poshmark, I saw sold around like 200 to 500. It definitely wasn't super common to get like 500, but mm -hmm. like 200 to three was very common. And then you actually can send these to the real real, which makes a lot of sense because mm -hmm. of the price. And to me, they sell very, very, very well on there. They sell for like 175 to 650. 50, but the real real can price them high and they will usually sell with not a huge discount yeah. on them. So for my experience, I have had quite a lot of GMV You have had a few. I've never had a pair, which is wonderful. And I have never sold any <laughs> myself, actually. I've always sent them to the real real. They always mark them high and they mm. always sell really quick for me. I've heard a little bit of differing opinions. Like Gabby said that sometimes they don't sell super quick for her on there. Mm -hmm. But for me, I've had really good experience sending them in. So that's yes. what I do. So I know Almost all of the brands that we're going to talk about can also be sent to the real room. Most of them, yeah. Okay, so my first one is a men's only brand. It is Allen Edmonds. I, to jump ahead a little bit, have had a ton of experience with Allen Edmonds. I am very comfortable selling their shoes. We see them a lot. I knew they were made in Wisconsin, so this is fun for me. They are made in Belgium, Wisconsin. Which actually we learned from one of you guys. Yeah. I have no idea where Belgium, Wisconsin is. Twin Cities is only like 45 minutes away from the Minnesota-Wisconsin border. So we go over there a little bit to go to like wineries and do fun things, which is fun. Which is also probably why we see them here all the time uh, is yeah. because Wisconsin's an hour away. Like a block. <laughs> <laughs> um, the brand was founded in 1922. They were one of the main suppliers for shoes for the U.S. Army and the Navy in World War II. Hmm. Which is fun. And they're still made in the U.S. to this day. It's one of their big company cornerstones is like making things in the U.S. And I think the main factory is still in or around Belgium. Um, So they are sold in places like Nordstrom, the Allen Edmonds website. They have a few stores in the Twin Cities and they're pretty selective with where you can buy them. I think Nordstrom was the only bigger department store that I could find them at. And then like obviously secondhand markets, the Real Real, Poshmark, you know, all these other kinds of places. I have a personal experience selling them for about 40 to $75 depending on condition. So one thing to note with Allen Edmonds is each of the shoes has like a name plate in it. So it'll say like Allen Edmonds, sizing information, you know, codes, whatever. And then it'll have a little plaque that says like the Derby, the Oxford. It's like a style name. So yeah. So it literally it says like the Derby and like for an example, like the Derby could retail at $400 and they sell for 150 So like pay attention to the names and pay attention to the resale value. They retail from anywhere from about 195 to 400 for the traditional dress shoes. And the boots are 400 plus. They're beautifully handmade, well, handmade, handmade in the U.S., I think, like, hand-finished. Um, all, like, locally sourced leathers, like, very, very nice materials. They are a very consistent seller on Poshmark and eBay. I don't have a pair. I've heard... I can't keep them I've heard eBay does really well. eBay, a lot of them that I've sold on eBay go mm -hmm. global shipping. 
and the real real does take them yes they do and also they i don't think they make many but they do make some like sweaters and stuff not many because i've had a sweater of theirs <laughs> yeah very few i though. think the clothes was definitely like an era yeah, that know. has gone by <laughs> i don't know if they still do that next up for me is one that is not as expensive as gian Vito rossi or ellen edmonds and that is sarto by franco sardo sardo so i'm not I talking about just like mainline franco sardo i'm talking about sardo collection it is called or sardo by franco sardo this is a newer line by franco names. sardo <laughs> and it is made to be like more trendy Mm -hmm. But also, it does have, like, the same price tags as normal Franco Sardo. And the it's same expensive. quality. It is in no way, like, a cheaper, younger brand. Mm -hmm. It's just very trendy and just as high quality. Mm -hmm. So I personally don't really like to pick up Franco Sardo, like, the normal line. Mm -hmm. But I have noticed I've had a lot of luck with Sardo Collection. They say that this line is handcrafted with Italian leathers. And like I said, it focuses on a trend and comfort. Mm -hmm. And we were looking. They have some cute... They got some good shoes normal franco sardo can be <laughs> kind really of boring cute. but the sardo stuff is actually really really cute mm -hmm. and because of that it is sold not only on francosardo.com but it is also a really big brand on anthropology's website because they're so trendy and so mm -hmm. adorable and it's that kind of like minimalist-esque like bohemian kind of a vibe but like, they kind like, of like check a lot of boxes it's, for well yeah it's like loafers and stuff so like classic styles but with like really fun colors with like a fun little twist fun to prints mm -hmm. like lots of orange lots of purples metallics yeah. and then they're also sold on like nordstrom's website and i'm sure there's a couple other places too and since it's just franco sardo the retail isn't anywhere near these other ones we've been talking about the retail's like 75 to 150 but the resale is about 35 to 80 and i would good. say for a more just like midline shoe brand that is not bad at all that's pretty good yeah so mm -hmm. i definitely pick up sardo i've had it twice because i've only found it twice actually mm -hmm. in the thrift store and they both sold really quick one wasn't even an anthro one and it was a little more boring but it still sold for like 35 and then the other anthro ones were just flat sandals and they sold for like 45 dollars quickly hmm, yeah which is nice. i don't think you've ever had it though have i you? have never i usually end up taking franco sardo's traditional like mainline franco sardo so they can sell them yeah me too but if i ever find a sardo by franco sardo i'm gonna sell them myself okay so my next brand is one that is a little bit more common kind of like alan edmonds it is the exact opposite of a dress shoe it's a running shoe i am talking about hoka one ones or as they are commonly heard of on the streets as hokas i have a pair and i love them oh my god they're amazing sue has a pair sue, sue does have a pair pairs. sue from the bins <laughs> i think it's pretty commonly known that they make men's and women's and a little tidbit so i was like one one they're hawaiian they're not hawaiian so hoka is originally founded in france it was by two french runners and the original intention with the shoe design was to make running downhill faster which terrifies me because i can't <laughs> I walk, walk downhill unless i'm like backing up I, like going a step a minute i don't want to run down i don't want to run downhill faster one one means fly over the earth in maori which is the native individuals of new new zealand new zealand new Zyland, which is quite interesting. So they were designed in 2009 by these two French dudes that wanted to run downhill faster. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, wanted to play, they wanted to play some intense tag or like, something. I don't know. They don't relocated know. to Southern California and then in 2013 they were bought by the same parent company as the people that own Ugg and Tiva, which I didn't know that, which I is interesting. I could see it with Tiva, but I, I don't I get. picture it with Ugg. Ugg? Some of the Ugg things that they're making and some of the things that Hoke is making. Then again, unless Ugg has like <laughs> Polar come under new ownership, I could maybe, because no Ugg makes some funky stuff now yes they do so they are sold at many 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 places in terms of like higher end department stores nordstrom's bergdorf's like any kind of just like traditional big box higher end department store they're sold at a lot of luxury running places things like running room a which, lot of just like mom and like pop fleet running feet shoes. fleet feet is a big one yeah just like any <laughs> like traditional like upper scale athleisure running or, like running or store they are also sold on like a little bit more like younger kind of interesting places like urban outfitters had some really cute pairs free people had some pairs Foot Locker, like Dick's Sporting Goods, Shields, if you're from the Midwest, like any just basic like outdoor store and then some like trendier places. My theory about Hoka's is they're kind of joining that group with like Birkenstock where 
every age range likes them. They're just everyone who likes any style likes them, like yeah. any aesthetic mm -hmm. and stuff. They're mm -hmm. just very universal. Yes. People really like them. Yes. So Hoka's kind of go the way of Alan Edmonds, where each of the specific running shoes has a specific name associated with it. I think I have a pair of the Bondi, Bondi, B O N D I. It's like the basic, like everybody has them, everybody using them all the time, like the really chunky ones. Those go for about 60 to 80, depending on the condition and the colors. The colors with Hoka's definitely are a big indicator of how much they're worth. And some of the other, like more specialized shoes retail about 150 to 175 and obviously that can go up depending on how specialized they get and that can go down depending on if it's like just the like three people collab was like really expensive oh we gotta get into that hocus tend to do a lot of collabs and i think like i feel like this is a recent thing so if you go on like urban outfitters if you go on like tillies or free people they have like specific shoes in specific colorways designed for each of these stores so the big one that i was seeing when i was doing all this research was the free people hokas i think it was just like the bondi or like the cabin there's another name for them that's like really common and they were selling on posh for like almost 400 dollars, and they retail for like 145 so like oh okay they definitely have the ability to hold their value and then like which is really fun. So my personal experience, I found two pairs in the bins one time. One of them sold for like 50 bucks. No big deal. The other one I kept and I love them. Because Ryan joined my gym. I did. I joined <laughs> the gym and they're amazing. I understand why people like Una over them. They're so I will say they, they fit small. They so. do. Yes. Yeah, so I'm typically 10 and these are 11 and I fit them perfectly. They're amazing. They're so squishy. Yes. They're so soft. Like, it makes running so much easier. And I have never had Hoka's, and I would love to have a pair for myself for the gym, but like Ryan said, mm -hmm. they really keep a lot of value, and I just don't want to invest that much into gym clothes. So hopefully I find some of the yes. bins at some point If you can well. find them. Oh, and you can also send them into the real real yeah. if you want to. And real was pricing them at like... A hundred. Like 85 to 100 bucks, mm -hmm. which is pretty good. Oh, that's right. They have even done a collab with Montclair. Yes. I totally forgot yes, about that. Because mm -hmm. one time there was a pair on the real real and they were like 600. And I was like, they look normal. So mm -hmm. I was like, Why? what is this? There's just like a little chicken on the side. They're Montclair. <laughs> yeah. So my next brand is one that maybe some of you have heard of, but if you have not, it is definitely one to grab if you find it. And it is called Birdies. Birdies. So when I think of Birdies, I really think that same like demographic as Rothy's or Teaks. It's very people mm -hmm. that like the comfort, lighter shoes, and can collect a number of different patterns and styles and the stuff. Collecting is they always so pivotal. They make flats and sneakers, but they're definitely much more known for the flats that they make. It's the Starling mm -hmm. is their style that's like super, super popular is that and like well known. The little spoken flipper looking one. Yeah, mm -hmm. the leather one. And they've been featured in a lot of like magazines and like newspapers for some reason. So newspapers. they're just renowned, I guess. <laughs> they're supposed to be stylish, comfortable, and gorgeous, is what their website said. And they are actually worn a lot by Meghan Markle. I don't know. I don't know if she still does, but she, she, does. she used to wear the Starling all Making the her time. Her podcast wearing her birdies. <laughs> <laughs> they are sold at the birdies website, and they're also sold at Nordstrom. And then, strangely enough, I did see a couple pairs sold on Stitch Fix. Hmm. So I don't know if that's like always the thing, or if they just happen to have some right now. And I also didn't really see that they're sold at any other department stores. So Nordstrom might be the only one who has the right to sell them. I'm honestly surprised that they're sold anywhere but birdies. I kind of thought yeah. they were only on birdies. I feel like because they go the way of Rothy's and Teaks where you can only really yeah. buy them like from That's what I thought. that original company. Yeah. But, um, Their retail is about 100 to 150 and okay. I don't think they like disappear as fast as like Rothy's and stuff because mm -hmm. you can actually buy them on sale sometimes. And then the resale is like 60 to 95 which is quite good that for really like good. a lighter just kind of plain shoe. Mm -hmm. I have had birdies now three times. The first pair I had was a little bit more interesting. It was like a mule with like tassels on it. Like a pom pom. I don't remember what they sold for, but I know they sold for more than my others because my other two were two pair of the Starling. Though they sold for less, they both sold in like 24 hours of listing them for like $60. So, Wick. so. Yeah, those are bins finds too. Yes. In the same that. bin yeah. that was about to be rolled away. Okay, so my next. And you have not had birdies. No, I've never had a pair of birdies, which is irritating, but I do know <laughs> that our dear friend Melinda does love them. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. So my next brand is a little bit higher on the retail. 
scale and it is Miss Rachel Comey. I absolutely love her. So a little bit of backstory. This is really fun. She was an art student in Vermont. She was a printmaker, which was brought up my alley because I was a printmaker when I was in college. I absolutely love it. And so she got into design by making novelty underwear for an art gallery somewhere on the East Coast. And then she somehow ended up landing a job at Theory. Like oh, Feist really? Theory. Yeah, which is really funny to me. Hmm. Um, so she was fired from Theory for <gasps> making costumes for her at the time husband's band, which is very famous, but I don't remember the name. And she made shirts for David Bowie. That's His fun. stylist commissioned two silk shirts from her and she charged him $100 a shirt. Yeah, I don't think you can vibe with David Bowie and Theory at the same time. You absolutely. Those are very different styles. Yeah, but I they think. fired her for doing outside work. So, <laughs> theory so what <laughs> on I, you theory literally what i didn't know is she originally started as a menswear line in 2001 and then she expanded to women's in 2004 which kind of makes sense because like if she's making costumes for her husband's band which she is an all male band men's. like she knows how to make men's clothing her shoes come however have gained this cult following because they're very minimalist they don't really have a whole lot of like extra crazy flair detail to them which i think is probably a note she took out of the theory book, but they're always these like really amazing high quality materials. They are quite expensive. So her women's shoes start at about 350 and can go up from there, obviously depending on like style, material. Her boots are pretty expensive. A lot of the leather things tend to be like in the more $400 range. Sold to places like Nordstrom's, Saks, her own website, a lot of like really higher end department stores. Her men's shoes, which are pretty like simple, pretty refined, tend to go for about 300 plus. And she usually only makes things like loafers, sneakers. Whereas like women's, it's like clogs, sandals, boots, like all kinds of different things. Her resale is very dependent on the style because she has been making shoes for a few years now, a few years, like since 2004. Um, so the style kind of depends the resale value. I've seen them for like, some of the older ones are going for about $50. Some of the newer ones are going for about $200. I found a pair when we were in Chicago at a little Salvation Army. They were half off, they were 12 bucks. And they had a $550 price tag on them because they were guider, it was a guider. And I saw one for $140 which was quite nice. And they still have a ton of attention on Poshmark. And I have never had them. But once again, it is a brand that the real world does take. Yes. If you do have a pair mm -hmm. that is like not selling for you. And she also makes clothes. Interesting. Side note. So next up for me, we're hopping back into, I'm also going back to a slightly more expensive brand. My next brand is Mercedes Castillo. And that is actually the name of the founder and owner of Mercedes Castillo. Mercedes Castillo. She is based in New York. That's where she's from. And she mm -hmm. launched her brand in 2017. So oh this is God. quite a new That's not even that brand. Old. No. So she's based in New York, but she was born in Spain and I then studied it. in Milan. Ooh. She knows what she's doing. She knows how to make shoes. She is inspired by art and creativity and sculptures, which I think, I'm sure I'm putting pictures here, I think I can totally see that. A lot of oh, her 100%. shoes are very different, very, lots of extra to them. They're very sculptural, them, yes. which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Her stuff is quite, quite expensive. I don't think it's as expensive as Gian Vito Rossi, but it is definitely close. It is sold at like Saks, Nordstrom, Berdoff Goodman, and the Mercedes Castillo website, and then a bunch of other extremely high-end luxury fashion websites. The retail for hers is three seventy-five to five hundred. So again, lower than lot. some of these, but still extremely expensive. Five hundred for a pair of shoes. And the resale, unfortunately, her shoes don't keep as much resale value as some of the other ones that I've talked about because the resale on is about 55 to 150 but the real real takes it and i have sent a few of mine that i've had there and they price it a bit higher it's usually like starts at 150 and goes up to maybe like 300 depending on the style mm -hmm. so obviously it's still worth picking up at like a thrift store or in yeah. the bins or something or if you found it like decently affordable and you looked at the style but it's a really expensive brand and her shoes are so nice the leather's so nice if you find it and it's your size get it for yourself her suede's are so, so amazing i know no, and they're just so like fun and new. And I have had, I think, two or three pair of her shoes. And I think I've ended up sending them all to the real real, but I might have mm -hmm. had like one or two of them listed for a little while. I have had her a handful of times and I just send them off to the real real. Mm -hmm. which is great. So my next brand is in the same kind of vein as Miss Rachel Comey in terms of like her minimalism and her aesthetic bolder in a way. So it's Miss Jenny Kane. <laughs> And I think everybody knows Miss Jenny Kane for her knits and her shoes. Her sweaters are the talk of the town at the current moment. Everybody and their mother wants one. Mules. And her shoes, her mules in particular, are quite popular and also quite expensive. A little bit of a backstory. 
she has very, very, very wealthy parents that generously gave her all of the money she needed to fund her brand. Her father is worth $26 billion. He's a, like a venture capitalist. Homeboy has a lot of money. She has two other sisters that also have very successful, very family funded businesses. No surprise there. I think one was a foundation though, right? Like one was like a charity. The Which, like, there, There's good. a family charity. Oh, okay. Yeah, they have like a family charity. It has something to do. So her family is of Jewish origin. And I do believe it's, I read that they have like a Jewish oriented like scholarship, which is really cool to like help kids go to college. So she has been described as the ultimate California lifestyle brand because everything is linen and beige and neutral. <laughs> so she's obviously known for her sweaters and her shoes. She has been quoted is saying I make sophisticated basics. So she's basically like, take Madewell and tack an extra zero onto the end of all the Madewell prices. She is very, very, very pricey. Her shoes start at around $295. The mules that everybody is so gung-ho on are about $425. And her boots can go up to $545. She had a pair of linen home slippers for $195. And it's literally a linen slipper. Mm, sounds like a good dirty. Which is great. <laughs> yeah, literally, you're gonna get nasty walking around the floor of your house. Um, so her shoes on Posh, most people really don't care about any of the other shoes <laughs> except for these mules. I saw a lot of the other ones selling for like 50 to $75 for like the sneakers. Some of the boots were in like the two to 300 range, but the mules are a very consistent easily over $100 sale, which is the ones everybody wants. Everybody needs a pair of Gina mules. They're only really sold at Nordstrom, her own personal stores. She has six across the country, most of them being in California and the Gina Kane website. And I've never had it. Nope, never had it, never seen them. I have heard a lot about it though. Or not I've... like about it, but I've heard a lot of talk about the name, like the yeah. brand. Like if you can find them at Goodwill, go off. They're definitely, there's a really big, big market and following mm -hmm. for those mules. Yes. I know that. That's yes, like what are. I know for sure. Yes. But it was interesting how you said she sells like bed sheets and stuff. She is literally like Lifestyle. the upper echelon of like Bath and Body Works. She has like soaps. It's kind of like if Goop, <clears throat> the Gwyneth Paltrow, like Keep the Vampires Way brand and like Bath and Body Works kind of like weird. The kid's the same person. It's interesting because we went into this not knowing anything. Like we know the brands, but not knowing like backstories. And so you find out these ones like Rachel <laughs> Comey, where it's like she came from nothing. She went to school. She, she designed studied, novelty underwear she, and now she's a premier then, fashion designer. And then it's and like it's she Rachel got Comey. alone. And it's Miss Jenny Kane was handed her golden yeah, ticket, which, which is cute. I mean, good for her. She was able to... She didn't ask to be born was, into a $26 billion She was able to go after empire. her passion. Good for her. So my next and last brand is definitely my most interesting one. And I feel like it's possibly the one that people have heard of the least. So this is a brand called Sleeper. And it is spelled just like it sounds, like sleeping with an ER at the end. Not sleepers. I thought it was sleepers. I thought it was sleepers also, but I think maybe people say like my pair of sleepers. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Plural. So Sleeper is real interesting. Sleeper says that they are, this is a direct quote, perfect for every moment of every day. And I know I have pictures of their signature shoes up here. So let me also add this. They are for, again, direct quote, going out to a chic dinner or sitting on the couch. And I would love to know who would go to like a five star <laughs> restaurant wearing this pink shearling like ballet flat. I like, really hope that like if she's going to Maxi's, like they're really expensive, <laughs> like at each plate is like $250 in New York City. And they're like, ma'am, mm -mm. they give her like a pair of black shoes. Like, they're like, put these on. <laughs> I feel like only Rihanna can do that. Like no, none of us can. She no, can. She nobody can. else. She's Rihanna, but we're not Rihanna. No, and I'm not dissing these shoes. I love these. I just think I just it's don't interesting. Know about <laughs> to like, can you imagine you're at like some formal like charity gala and all of a sudden like homegirl walks in her little pink fussy shoes? I mean, like, well, and it's like I mean I'm all for like wear anything <laughs> on any occasion. I love funky clothes. <laughs> you know, this reminds me of. But it's just funny. Their signature one is the one that I'm sure I've been showing, and it is this shearling ballet flat. They use a lot of shearling and they have this little like bobble tassels that you tie. There's a fun picture on the website where someone's like throwing them in the air. <laughs> the intern that just... And then they also it's make a lot of here. other flats. They use like satins. They use like feathers. They, it's very whimsical sleep kind of is what I think of it. Like shearling and feathers. And you're and, wearing those to your form. <laughs> and apparently you're going to your five star dinner in them. Um, And they also do make clothing. And no hmm. surprise to anyone, they make pajamas. But they also make dresses. Do you wear those to your five star dinners? Yes. They're like, these pajamas you could wake up and just run right out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> they make dresses too. And they 
actually do make girls stuff, which was interesting. Oh. I didn't know that until I was looking into this. They are sold at net porte Shop Bop, Neiman's, and many other places, their own website. They, like I said, are sold at Shop Bop, so they are more of a like newer, trendy, even like younger people are more into them. <laughs> they retail for $225 to $300, which is quite a good amount of money. And their resale is about $100 to $250. Those shearling ones like literally sell for like $20 under the retail. It's pretty crazy. Do they like sell out often? Is that the thing? No, because I also saw someone sell there too. So People I don't just like know em. what the deal is. But I have never had sleepers shoes. I've had sleeper, I have a sleeper dress right now. And I just recently got it. I think it's up to like four or five likes, but I have it priced like 250. So never had anything. And I just got it. But I had heard of it before, especially that shearling shoe and again the real real does take it if yes. you have a pair so this i think is the only brand on this list that the real real does not take so opposite of this this of is this literally sleeper. like here's everything else here's the one i'm gonna talk about this speaks to my heart as a child if you know i was an emo i was a goth i had black hair i had black clothes i only shopped at hot topic my jeans were too tight to the point where i didn't have blood flow in my ankles for <laughs> almost all of middle school and i wanted a pair of these shoes so bad and all my friends had them and i never did because my parents had common sense and said there's no way you're leaving the house in this. It is Demonia. So Demonia, uh, it's like the emo goth. If it sounds familiar. Subculture. It's because in like the most recent haul we did. One of them. Oh, mm -hmm. against Lori and Hope. Yeah. I mm -hmm. found Demonia's. Yes. So they are very, very, very known for these massive platform boots, sneakers. They were found in 1993 until the California. They definitely like cater to the goth punk market and they're amazing. Their shoes are so cool. They, not surprisingly, are owned by Pleaser, which if you don't know, is like the big heel, clear plastic heel, if you catch what the eyebrows are doing company. Platform tall. Platform tall heels for dancing, for dancing at night. And shockingly, so Pleaser doesn't make any men's shoes, but Demonia makes men's and women's shoes, which is really interesting. So they obviously are known for these like massive, crazy over the top, like buckles down the whole thing, like platform shoes, boots, and they're vegan friendly which is interesting. So they really only sold at Demonia, Dolls Kill, and the Pleaser website. You really can't get them a whole lot of places. I know every now and again, I used to hear of them, they would do like pop-ups for like, I think Spencer's. Like way back in the day, they would have like Demonia pop-ups, but I don't think that exists anymore. They are very, very, very finicky in terms of resale. The retail, they're usually not that expensive. So they can kind of go from about 60 to like the things that aren't that elaborate and then as the shoe gets taller or as like it goes further up your leg or as they add more buckles or spider webs or chains or something else they get more expensive so they really only retail for the common one or resale excuse me for about 30 to 50 dollars if it's like a pretty common shoe but some of the uncommon ones can go for about 75 plus i saw one on etsy that sold for about 250 a lot of the vintage ones definitely have a lot more resale value than some of the newer ones do they are amazing i love them i've never really had any personally jack has had a pair have has a I pair. just got them. Mm -hmm. But the rarer ones tend to sell extremely quickly just because like the Demonia subculture is a very devoted group of human beings. They love the shoes, they know what they want, and if they see them and their size, pull the plug and buy them. And last, um, Shoe Bolo, we covered a brand called Why Are You? Very simple. I, th I think mm -hmm. that was what that was in, which I'll link below. And it, they, these are very like Why Are You where mm -hmm. they don't retail like crazy high, but they keep so much value because yes. once they're oh, gone, God. they're gone. Yes, when they're they sold don't. out, you can't find them. They have a few classic styles that they tend to release in, like, new colors and, like, new prints and stuff. But, like, if you want, like, a specific style in a specific color or, like, with a specific embellishment or something, you gotta buy them. And mine are, like, when you see mine them. are, like, genuine, like... 90s or early 2000s oh, mm -hmm. and so i have mine priced at 175 and they have a yes. lot of likes so that is all that we have for you guys today this is pretty long for being a bolo video but i feel like we had a lot of information to share with you guys and mm -hmm. it was pretty fun to research these yeah. like we said i'm sure we're gonna have a haul this thursday but we've been enjoying doing some of the requests that you guys have mm -hmm. for us so please below leave requests for what maybe bolo lists you want to see just what videos in general you want to see from us and we will try to do those and we will see you on thursday well Thanks actually well. let us know below if you learned any of these which ones did you not know which ones you did you know experience selling any of these. yes was it a good experience bad experience and no. then we will see you on thursday goodbye goodbye